It's not like Boston rappers are not as good as some of the national rappers just because they're not as famous. That's crazy. There's a lot of cats out here that been doing it, man. There's so, so many good artists here in Boston, man. It's just uh, pretty tough for people to uh, make it out. There's a formula. It's so good. It's almost crazy, a lot of the music that's coming out of here. Catch me in JP. You can catch me in Dorchester, South Bend, Mission Hill, Cambridge. I'm going to go get what I want to get. You got to be in your blood. You can't just wake up and say, you know, I'm going to be a rapper now. You, you gotta know your history, you know, you gotta know a lot of these young men, up and coming, coming cats, they don't, they don't know the, the history. They don't know, you know, the legacy of hip hop. So, for me, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta know where, where it came from. You had, you had uh, the almighty RSO, which turned into, into Made Men. Um, you had, you know, Popeye and Spinach, you had the GQ, um, Top Choice Click, um, Joint Ventures. You had a TDS Mob, you know, you had a lot of cats. Actually, TDS Mob was the first cat that I ever seen on BET. Hello. Um, this is this is the, you know, one of the pioneers from TDS Mob, Hello. Cool Jesus. Um, that, this, this record they had called I Don't Know What This World Is Coming To, I seen that on Rap City. That was the first joint I ever seen from Boston, and it, and it inspired me, like, to, 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 you know, be as, as, as good as I could be. And, you know, you have Gangstar that came from here, Guru, and, you know, the original Gangstar with Mike D and all that. So, yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of, in the, in the, in the you know, mid 80s, there was a lot of great, great artists and acts out of us. But at the time, y'all weren't, you know, supporting each other? Was yeah, it we more? was. We oh, was. No, no, it the wasn't scene. none of that. It wasn't none of that. It wasn't none of that hate back then. Cause no. it, was, it was hip hop, you know what I'm saying? It was real hip hop. So, so, oh, that, so it started off. Battle. We really would battle. battle like, yeah. you would really get your whole crew. And we get our whole crew, and we go to Shea Wu or the Lee School or different little venues that we had at the time, and we would set up a battle. Everybody would know about it. Everybody would be there. It was a legit battle. I remember the the, the battle I seen was RSO uh, versus Slaughter Crew, the original Slaughter. Okay, with with, with my man uh, Kev Ski. Yeah. Killer DJ, yeah. um, the original Juice. DMX, the beatbox. Yeah, the original DMX. Yeah. Um, and, and Tang Juice. Yeah, and and they battled, they battled RSO, and it was it was one of the most classic battles that I that I ever seen. BK Crew battled RSO back then, so there was a lot of that going on. Like you know, I mean, there would be little fights and stuff, but it was way more united because it was new, it was fresh. So when when we did a did a show, everybody would show up. It was uh. Real legitimate love for the for the game. 88.1 Magnus is the pioneer of Boston hip hop. Yeah. He had a show called Leco's Lemma. Yeah, and Lemma. that used to that was the you know the the, the blueprint for, for radio and hip hop. Rusty used to be on on uh, RBB yeah. back in the days. Him and um, Wallace T. Wallace T. Um, Skeeter. Skeeter. We, um, we going way back. As a matter of fact, right? Believe it or so, not. So when, around what time is this? What year would you say? It's like 86. Yeah, 86, 86 85, 85 yeah. 86. Wendy Williams used to work for RBB. Yeah, Wendy Williams was up here. She went to school here. She used to be on the air. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that back then, you know, you really Magnus kind of set the trend. He started playing nothing but local records. You could send in your tape. And he would play it, curses yeah. and all. Yeah. There was, there, you know, and then if you were that good, they had a top 10 countdown every week. And my crew was called FTI Crew, which stand for Fresh to Impress. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. you know, we had a song called Suzy Q. Yeah. It was number one on the, on the countdown for, for Mad Weeks. You know, TDS had number one joints on the countdown, RSO, RCC Crew. It was, it was really a, 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 a great.
great, great time in hip hop in Boston. Um, Street beat. That was yeah, street that, beat. Was, that, came, later that came later on with, yeah. with um, Dave Mays, the source. Logo Dave. And, Logo um, Dave and John Schechter. John Schechter, yeah. Big BMOC. Big yeah, men on big campus. Big man on campus. They had a 12 inch back then going to Harvard. Going to Harvard University. You know, we was up there with them at the inception of that. We we was around for everything. Yeah. Any anything that had to do with hip hop in Boston from the very beginning, I was there. Yeah, we was right there. Right I was there on the there. front line. There. And, and and back then, man, we used to have a lot of shows that used to come through and you know, people would actually front as other artists. I remember when Scott LaRock died. Oh, God um, so yep. yeah, tell, B, tell BDP had, had a show at the channel. The channel was the venue mm -hmm. to do shows at back then. It was downtown. And um the dude this dude came saying he was KRS one. Because the promoter didn't want to cancel the show. It was the dude Levi, Levi 167. 167. Yep. Remember that song? Way back then. He came as an imposter being KRS one. And Levi 167 was light skin. Yeah. And we so had already seen the album cover. We had already seen Criminal Minded. So we was like, this ain't you ain't KRS. He's like, I am KRS. And back then Boston was ruthless. They was throwing Coke cans. Wave hitting them brushes, with batteries, with batteries, anything you could get hit with, they hit, they got him off the stage yeah. with physically, physically got him off the stage. Wave Damn. brushes, yeah, I remember Milk D, Milk D got hit in the face with a wave brush at Shea Boo. I was at that show. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, like, like bow, like, right? In it. He was singing and bow, hit him in the nose. He started crying. They rushed him off the stage. I mean, you couldn't come to Boston. After a while, it, it got shut down when we had no shows yeah, because we were so wild. That's yeah, off the hook. Like, okay, um, I don't know if you remember this. Remember when Spice got thrown off the stage by oh, Charlie yeah. Mack? I was there. Uh, from, uh, Fresh, Fresh Prince. Prince. Fresh Prince. I, I was there. I was. I was. I was everywhere. You was at that show. I most certainly was. MC Spice, we love you too, oh, brother. brother. He's one of the pioneers. Yeah. Don't he was. You guys like a dog. He was really, you know. He was the type of rapper that didn't give a fuck. He would get at anybody. So he opened up for Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince. Yo, and after he finished his set, he said, and I want to battle the Fresh Prince right now. He can't fuck with me, fuck that. So then when Fresh Prince and them got on stage, he was like, well, who's this MC Sugar or whatever mm -hmm. he was, because yeah, it was MC, MC Spice. He said, yeah, whatever with him, blah, blah, blah. Spice was in the front. Fuck that. He ended up jumping on stage. Fresh Prince looked at Charlie Mack, who's a big, big dude. Charlie, get this dude up. Charlie Mack grabbed him, threw him off the stage, jumped off the stage and started whooping his ass. Then Fresh Prince and them continued and the crowd went crazy. Bananas. It was so classic, man. Classic. I mean. Spice, we want to thank you for that moment in hip hop. Yeah, that, that was a great moment, man. It was really great. <laughs> What advice would you get for these, you know, dudes out here trying to Stop, do, do a get big a job? Like rapper T, get a job. Yeah, man. Bro, yeah, you know. I think if you're not really, you know, to me, the the, the best advice I can give you is, you know, know the business, man. Like, know what you're doing in this business. Don't just come into it blind. Like, study it and, and, and study people's careers and study that you know I mean that that's how you can become successful uh, by studying what other people are doing and you know try to take it and use it to your advantage um, and put it out independently man but put out records don't do a, a million mixtapes man because everybody's doing that be different so for what the so for what artists are out here there are, there's a lot of talent yeah the artists that are out here doing it great I don't think we need any more no, unless they come up with something Fight. Real fresh and new that's just undeniable where you're like, this dude? Yeah. I haven't seen this dude yet. Yo, what up, y'all? Welcome to Bean Time. It's Master Ace. I'm going to big up my man behind the camera, the DP, my man Ace. You know what it is, man. He just did his thing. We did our thing. We just shot the, the next um, parody um, spoof TV trailer for the A&E album, me and Ed OG's album. You know what I'm saying? Call, this one's called Intervention. And um, big up my man Ace for holding it down on the camera and making it happen. All right? I'm going to say this, and then, you know, I'm going to go back to what I was doing. Um, like EPMD said, man, rap is out of control right now. It's out of control. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My man, he said it best. People are willing to die to be known as the best rapper alive. Think about that for a minute.
Thanks for watching. Welcome to Bean Town. Watch previous episodes and don't forget to check us out on Facebook. Also subscribe to the Real Ace YouTube channel. Thank you.